first tab. It's, I, I clicked start game and it did nothing, so I clicked the button next to it. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're, we're rolling into game two here. It's 1 0 for our outset Terran, Mojaheed. Um, can Blaze turn around? I think he can. Um, he did have some questionable play in the last game, but we'll see what he does this game. Um, okay. So spawning here in the bottom right, we have from Team UR, it is Blajwa. And then the top left, our Purple Terran currently up 1-0 in this series, it is Mojaheed. Yeah, this, this tournament has just very strong showing from this outset Terran. He's, he's really mowing through the composition and uh, competition and you know, a win against Ninikazi is nothing to laugh at. You know, Ninikazi you know, done very well in the past. He's actually beat uh, Mojahid before. Um, so, you know, he's just he's stepped up his game, and it's good to see. I actually don't think we've had a tournament where we have had the same champion. I could be wrong about last week. Uh, but this, the results have been very scattered. No one's dominating. Um, we have had a lot of regulars, but no one is absolutely breaking away from the competition. Yep. So they will not find each other immediately. And uh, another crossbone situation. Yeah, so again in TBT this promotes a longer game. Uh, you know, the macro style is favored here, but it's kind of weird to, because uh, you don't know if your opponent's near. So we actually are, see two barracks in production before the CC on. Uh, for yeah. outsets Mojahid, I think if he knew that the spawns were crossed, he wouldn't be going for this. Yeah. Um, um, I think he's going to go for like an economic sort of mass reaper play here. Um, I do this a lot versus Zerg. I've never tried this versus Terran. Um, but like, this gets you like a decent amount of reapers out. You get map control. You can poke in, do some damage. Uh, it delays your tech a bit, but it can really like get in some damage, mostly versus Zerg. But, like, this could work versus Terran. Not on these uh, spawn locations, though. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, again, this is just something that if, if the players were aware of the spawns, um, we'd probably be seeing different builds. Uh, again, uh, Mojiki going for what appears to be some kind of Reaper, uh, Mass Reaper into Macro, whereas uh, Bleach, while playing it a lot more standard, he's getting his oh. Barracks and Factory. This actually and might, this is going to benefit um, Mojiki. Although, Moji lost one Reaper already, which is like yeah, a big this, deal. I mean, just and looking that, at the build orders, I, I'd, I'd favor Mojahid, but this is not playing out the way he wanted. Yeah. Um, um, Blaze Ross scouting the multiple Reapers, so he should know that there's probably going to be more on the way. Um, yeah. Like, he's, this is three that he's seen so far. The, the, there's kind of an awkward situation right now where you know what's coming, but you don't really have the infrastructure to accommodate anything to deal with it. So the, the, the only thing he can do right now is pump out Marines, and that's what he was going to do anyway. So he might take a little bit of damage here. Um, good bombs. There you Ouch. go. Um, so all, all he needs to do is give that Marine a little love tap, and then it's it's gone. Um, so still a decent position. Um, both, exp both players are expanding. Uh, roughly around the same time, so uh, no nothing too abnormal except for this Reaper play early. I wouldn't be uh, surprised to see Mojahid slap down another CC here in a sec. Um, I go this is really strong because of the fact that it's Reapers, and when this happens, your opponent expects um, a lower economy, a worse economy. However, when you get up three CCs behind it, like your opponent just doesn't know what's going on. They don't know where they are in the game. Yeah, um, I, I especially like how this, I can see already see how this build is very versatile. You know, if your Reapers don't get a lot of damage, you're not throwing down the early third command center. Um, yeah. We still haven't, seen it, we still haven't seen it yet. We still haven't seen it yet. He's instead opting to go for Engineering Bay and his uh, add-ons and tech. Yeah, which I don't blame him. Um, since he didn't really get much into the main, he doesn't know what's really going on. And so if he has all these Reapers across the map, and then bam, a Banshee runs into his base, like, he's dead. There's yeah, nothing absolutely. He can so he needs uh, like that engineering bay up. He's probably gonna uh, eventually put down some missile turrets. Um, he's floating a bit uh, too many minerals, in my opinion. But uh, it so could hint. Do... It could hint that he really wants to take this third, but just doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. Um, he is. He is spending them now. So. 
I wouldn't mind a third base here. I think if uh, Mojahid knew his position, he'd definitely be opting to throw down that third. These could be really good. Okay, that didn't do a whole lot. It could have it could have done a lot more. Uh, maybe if he yep. threw it behind the screens, but okay. again, that's not really what they're trying to accomplish, right? They already did their job. They're just kind of poking in now, seeing what's up. And it was a good scout. He did see that medevac with the tank on it, so now he's going to yep. be on his feet, and he's going to be ready for whatever comes out of that. A pretty pretty bad supply block here for for Blaze. Um, he's been kind of suffering with that all throughout, but I'm not sure if it's like every Terran, but this happens to me a lot. Where every time I get the 46 supply, I get supply blocked. I think this is just like the natural there's, supply block. Yeah, there's there's probably some weird timing where it's like it's like when your medevac start to kick in with your like reactor along with your t like that's a lot of supply like per production cycle. Yeah. So it, it could just be something like, oh yeah, your reactor medevacs are starting to kick in and now all of a sudden you need to build those fly depots faster. Um, I agree. There's certain timings with every race, I think, I feel that people get supply blocked at. Like maybe, uh, Zerg is a little bit, like you can kind of see in the future a little bit better. Um, just because like, oh yeah, I'm going to build a lot of roaches, I should build two overloads right now. Yeah. But um, but I feel like every race does kind of have those natural timings where, you, where even like a good player will get supply blocked. Okay, so we're seeing some more drop play here. Um, I think this is an alright move. Uh, he d doesn't really know what's on the other side of the map, so maybe get some damage done, get some info as well, and then um, play his game from there. But this is weird because now there's a oh, now there's a drop coming up from Mojahid, so it's just kind of putting each player in an awkward position. I think Mojahid's more prepared to defend against this than Blaze, um, but we're gonna have to see, right? It's, it all depends on how they react to this. And okay, here we go, two more medevacs coming in. Um, I hope this doesn't turn into another weird base trade. I mean, those are fun, uh, and I feel like that's what that's what Blaze needs to pull out a win. Yeah, um, I think now since Blaze has kept a Viking in a tank at home, he's a bit more prepared than this, and like Blaze just dropped right on top, top of the production. I I would have liked to see um, Blaze drop a single uh, Marine to deal with that SCV bullet in the third, because yeah. that could be a key factor. Like if both of them shut down the drops. Um, no third base compared to a third base is pretty big because naturally you're gonna want to start to build more workers after like a big fight like that. So, and Mojahi just lost two full medevacs and marines here. Um, oh wow! Like in this base trade scenario, like you just want to keep as many units alive as possible. Um, so now, Blaze basically can take out the main of uh, Mojahid. He won't be able to take out the natural because he has tanks set up. And I don't think he has enough to break it. Yeah, um, who knows, is is there actually high, yeah, there is high ground vision. It's going to be very difficult to siege this natural, especially with another tank being oh. produced. The factory on the low ground is actually a, a large uh, factor here. Okay, he's pulling SCVs. He does lose the tank. I think. I don't really like this, though. I yeah. think he lost too many SCVs for this to be worse. Okay, he's just going to straight up drop his tanks. On the yeah, logo, yeah. I, oh man, both both are throwing away their drop forces pretty well. Mojit appears to be in a little bit better of a position because there's no SCVs here. 34 were killed in that drop from Mojit. Yeah. Six SCVs left for Blazewall. Yeah, this is Blazewall. Kind of just like it's chaotic to determine like what's going on in the middle of a base race. But I, again, you should try to keep as much alive as possible and then make an assessment afterwards. Like, where am I? Um, yes. It seemed like both of them kind of like tried to go for each other's throat, and just Mojahi did a better job. And now all of a sudden, yeah, like there's no way you can come back from that. Um, even if both your productions like get wiped out, the fact that he has 19 SCVs and you have like six, that's kind of like that's that's it right there. Yeah. 